In the last video, we finished off with configuring your cluster for Hyper-V Replica. This video is about failing over and failing back. Before we get into that, we need to look at the configuration of a replica. Unlike clustering, Replica has no way to know if a virtual machine is in a position where it should be failed over. A replica host might lose connectivity to the source, but that doesn't mean the source is down. Therefore, failover and failback is a manual process. Both processes can be done in the GUI tools or in PowerShell. Before we get into that, we'll briefly discuss configuring Replica for a VM. There are a lot of options and you'll want to spend some time researching them to be sure you've got the optimal setup for your guests. We're going to focus on those that affect the failover and failback process. You can start replicating a VM either from Hyper-V Manager or from Failover Cluster Manager. You can also use PowerShell, although we won't show that here. Just right-click on the VM and go through the Replication menu item to get started. We begin by picking the host or cluster we want to target. It determines the capabilities of that system, and we pick the replication method that we want. We then choose which disks to replicate. Here, we pick how often to replicate. Shorter intervals mean smaller and more frequent synchronization and less loss in the event of an outage, but it could make your host busier. Here's the first place that really affects failover. If you only keep one recovery point, then that's your only option if you need to turn on the replica. If for some reason that replica is corrupted, then it is useless. To address that, you can choose additional replicas, but they come at a space premium. Here, you also get the ability to use VSS. The normal replica is basically a standard save state. This one triggers the VSS service inside the guest, so VSS registered applications will take their normal action, such as flushing a database's log files. This screen is just when and how to start replicating. Failover and failback are fortunately not difficult, especially since they're probably going to be used in emergencies. But you can perform a planned failover, whether for testing or because you know that there is a problem, such as a hardware failure or a pending power outage. This process ensures that the replica is completely up to date. For this, the virtual machine must be off. You start from the source virtual machine's replication menu. You can see the options here to automatically set up the reverse and to start the replica machine after the failover. We're going to clear these. Once this finishes, we're in a halfway point. The source system isn't replicating, but the target virtual machine isn't exactly the active guest either. We need to come to the target and click failover to complete the failover process. This is now the active virtual machine. To return it, we go through reverse replication, which we could have had it do automatically. To return it, we simply go on the same options in reverse. This time, we'll select all of the options. And now, everything is exactly as it was when we started. You've already seen everything you need to perform an unplanned failover. In this case, it's assumed that the source system isn't available, so you just skip all the work done on the source and just tell the target to failover. It warns about data loss of anything that happened at the source since the last replica, but we assume that there's nothing there anymore anyway, and that's all there is to the unplanned failover process. If the source system comes back online, you need to make sure that the source VM is off, and then you would go through all the menus to reverse replication, and then proceed just like you did in the earlier steps. Replica has very rich support from PowerShell. We're not going to talk about all the available commandlets here, as most are easy to map to the procedures that you saw in the GUI, and, of course, they have a robust help system. 
pair in particular that we do want to talk about are the two dealing with the failover network configuration, because that can't be set in the GUI. What these two do is establish TCP IP settings that will be delivered to the guest when his replica is spun up. The settings themselves aren't too difficult to figure out. You can set by VM name, by VM object as piped in from Git VM, or by the specific adapter. If you set options, you can clear them using either of these clear options. If you want to set the options, then you use the parameters as indicated. The most important thing to remember about Replica is that unlike the failover cluster, it has no ability to protect against the same virtual machine running in more than one place at the same time. This could lead to a great many problems, especially with database systems. In case you were wondering why the failover process isn't automatic, this is why. This concludes our discussion of Hyper-V Replica in a cluster. In our next video, we're going to talk about backup.